Hey guys, welcome to Action Reactions. So make sure to subscribe and like to my channel. Tons of content here in my channel. TV show trailers, YouTube videos, movie trailers, game trailers, try not to laugh challenges, gaming compilation videos, regular uploads. You can even ask me for what to make. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Definitely subscribe and stick to my channel. You'll see a lot of content. So let's get to the reactions. Let's go. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. The sincerest form of flattery is not trying to kill your superhero husband. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills. Find out who would win a death battle. What consumes the thoughts of a god? What do immortals dream of with all the time in the world? In Zamasu's case, his one goal was divine justice. Yeah, this guy's got major Final Fantasy big bad energy all over him. As the assistant to Universe 10's supreme power, Zamasu prized above all else cosmic order and natural beauty. Well, that reminds me, did you know I can burn and burn at the same time? Here, let me try it. Unsurprisingly, Zamasu despised the inherently chaotic nature of mortals, being seemingly unwilling to lift themselves out of their own cycle of violence and stupidity, like some people I know. Yeah, I know those people too. His heart was clouded until the day he met Son Goku. With God Key, Goku could match blows with the God of Destruction, Beerus. Their clash nearly destroyed the entirety of Universe 7, a cosmological structure at least nine times larger than our own universe. At most, it could even be as large as 13 times greater than ours. And side note, it's worth mentioning that when two gods of destruction fought, they were capable of casually destroying two of these universes. And since the shockwaves from their punches trapped across the river seven seconds, they'd have to be hitting way faster than light. Goku was tapping into a Super Saiyan God form for this, though clearly not at its full strength. While the exact multiplier for Super Saiyan Blue is unknown, Toriyama himself has directly compared it to the original Super Saiyan form. And don't forget, Goku trained with Whis and fought in the tournament with Universe 6 before Zamasu caught up with him, so by that time, he was way stronger. He was a mortal with the powers of gods beyond even Zamasu's abilities, someone who could bring his dreams to fruition. So Zami did what anyone would do in that situation, kill his master to become the Supreme Kai, which on the Super Dragon Balls to switch bodies with Goku, and kill every single mortal in the universe. And thus the deity Zamasu became <laughs> Goku now, you might be wondering, why didn't he just wish all the mortals dead? Uh, but that wouldn't be as fun, would it? Well, that's got all of Goku's strength and power unwielded by a genocidal maniac instead of that lovable goober of a monkey man. And in keeping with Goku's Saiyan heritage and godly key, Black can easily achieve the form of Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan. But with a champagneful twist, Super Saiyan Rose. I got Rose. Really? What is he, a suburban white man? Watch out, Mario's not Super Saiyan. Oh, he's no good at techniques too, like an instant transmission, where he focuses on a person's key signature to teleport to their location. He's even got the black Kamehameha, which is a Kamehameha, but pink. And with the Saiya body, he gets stronger and stronger every time he almost dies. He just becomes harder and harder to kill. Which really sucks for the rest of the universe, because black is kind of like if Goku just snapped one day and used his powers to their full murderous potential. Like the gods would cut. Where he surrounds his hands with a glue blade and slice you to ribbons. He used this very technique to uh, kill Goku's family. He can even extend his glue blade into a huge herb one called the Azure Dragon Sword, which, along with his Kamehameha, confirms my suspicions that Goku is colorblind. Actually, Black's Azure Dragon Sword is named after a legendary weapon wielded by one of Earth's greatest warriors, the desert bandit Yamcha. Wait, what? A bunch of shadow clothes. Black, not Crater Boy over here. But his most dastardly weapon isn't a key technique at all. It's the time ring he got from his dead master. This ring allowed Black to travel through time and even escaped oh, into yeah, Future Trunks' alternate timeline, time where he had free reign oh, over the entire that's universe. That's and let him team up with his best bud, himself! Too bad Goku and company showed up to spoil the fun! Wait, 
using Zamasu and Goku's body and you the power there too, Goku? There's only one Goku in the multiverse, right? But Goku met Black before he met Zamasu, which means Black existed before Zamasu came up with the idea, and then they killed Zamasu before he could do anyway but Goku Black was still around? What the hell is going on? Sure, it's a classic grandfather's paradox. Black's time ring prevents him from being affected by alterations to his own personal timeline. So, killing him in the past doesn't change his future, and vice versa. He's almost impossible to kill because even if you do it at one point in time, he still exists at another point in time. And another. And another. And another. It took me Zash and Omni, the most powerful being in all of creation, to step in and face that. No, I'm saying if it was time line, just to stop life. Zamasu's clear power was the eradication of all mortal life in the universe, and he stole the strongest mortal's body to do it. But in the end, he was always doomed to fail. This quest for power meant left against the being that would always be stronger, no matter what he did or who he was. And the universe ended up being destroyed anyway. It's like one big cosmic joke with no one left to laugh. You've been running around making messes for too long. Shit, the light. I can't wait to watch it die. Mary is one of the greatest heroes in history, with inspiration to many across time and space. And there's no better example than his number one fan from the 25th century, Eobard Thaw. I wish we've tackled a lot of stupid names for things in our years here at Death Battle, but I'm confident that Eobard is the dumbest fucking first name I've ever heard in my life. Eobard was completely obsessed with the flag and dedicated his whole life to studying the speed Force like a total nerd. Good luck to him, because there's no way he's figuring that shit out. But Thawne's life irrevocably changed the day he discovered a time capsule from the 21st century. By some strange coincidence, it just so happened to contain Barry's costume. By experimenting on it, Thawne managed to replicate the Flash's powers turning himself into a mirror of his idol. And you can bet he totally crapped himself when Barry Senpai showed up in the future and took him under his wings. It was a dream come true. Until Barry realized that Thawn had fabricated crimes in order to show up and save the day. Disgraced, Thawn promised to better himself before traveling to the past to prove his worth to his hero. To prove that their bond that's when he thought found out that Barry already had a best friend, and a family, and a life. Without him, he didn't matter. He wasn't special, he was just a nobody Barry tossed out in the trash and forgot about. Like my Tinder dates do to me. If only. When Thawne visited the Flash Museum in Barry's time, he discovered the secret identity to Flash's greatest enemy that in his future had been lost to time. The one Barry was fated to kill in battle. Eobard Thawne. So Barry created him. Oh, wait, no, oh, ain't that a bitch? He shot through Thawne mad. If he couldn't be Flash's best friend, he'd be his greatest enemy. He gets us a gun. Sure, his own future death. He would travel from the future to terrorize the Flash family in the past. Revenge to a new difference. He'd become the Reverse Flash. Reverse Flash? We're gonna be setting the world on fire with these names today! Come with. Thawne draws his powers from the negative speed force, which he generates with every step he takes. Just like Barry does with the regular speed force. The negative speed force gives Thawne access to many of the Flash's powers, including his mind-bending super speed, enough to travel all across time and space in days. He can keep up with and surpass other speedsters like Barry and Wallace. Who once ran fast enough to cross the universe Faster than two gods who could teleport. While he even yeah, beat so himself in a race, oh, and Barry admitted he thought was still faster than that. Wait just a second, he beat himself? That doesn't even make sense. But unlike Barry and Wally, Thawne 
Weiss's powers more catastrophic, using them to their full potential without so any object for collateral. For instance, his ability to vibrate himself through solid objects. Subject likes a vital organ! And if he did, he'd scramble their molecules, causing instant death. Thorn did just that to Barry's wife, Iris, and Barry did not appreciate it. Thorn's vibrations are so powerful, he can even produce a counterforce that can reverse the destruction of the entire universe. Pretty crazy sounding, but even B tier speedsters like Jenny Ogdenhats can do the same kind of thing. And when Barry and Wally raced each other, they were tearing up the entire multiverse! Bond can create shockwaves with a snap, phase into your body and possess you, and even speak at such high speeds that you'll hear his words as though they were your own thoughts. And instead of stealing your speed like boys, we back! He can steal your time! Yeah! I'm going to take it! 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 I'm going but Thorn's greatest ability is his unmatched skill at time travel, and he uses this expertise to be as petty and cruel as humanly possible. How is that possible? How do we get it that if he went back in time to kill Barry before he got his powers, he'd erase himself from the time stream too? So instead, he just made Barry's life suck as hard as he could, push him down some stairs, which got his best friend from history. Kill his mom? He even told Barry he'd go back in time and adopt him as his own son. Dude, what the fuck? That's another big difference between Thawne and Barry. Whereas Barry only went back in time to save his mother's life, but Thawne often went back in time to try to fix his own mediocre. He killed his more successful younger brother, his career rival at the Flash Museum, and every single boyfriend his crush had until there was no one left but him. And when she still rejected him, he went back in time again and made her an invalid for the rest of her life. Jesus Christ! This guy's a monster! It's impossible! It's a baby paradox or whatever. If he went back in time to kill someone, they'd be dead in the future. I can't have him. No one can't have him. Which means you would never know them and want to go back in time in the first place, right? All I know Wiz, is, oh, okay. maybe time is a construct with no legitimate unit of measurement other than the meager attempts man has made to understand the incomprehensible world around him. Uh, well, the truth was just inside the time stream when Barry initiated Flashpoint, which rewrote the universe while Fawn was technically disconnected from it. So, Fawn essentially broke. Literally, figuratively, mentally, physically, temporally. Or maybe he just hated Barry so much that the fight the laws of time itself! Because Kyle More specifically, he became a living paradox, a being without a past and a future. Literally without continuity. Not only did this mean he'd be unaffected by changes to his past, it made him effectively immortal. Stabbed in the chest by evil Batman, vaporized by Iris in some sweet, sweet payback, or getting Dr. Manhattan by the big blue guy. Thawne was always reborn, unable to stay dead. But more than anything, it made him a immortal concept. Unlike Barry, his changes to time could destroy all of reality. Thawne could do whatever he wanted. He was impossible to stop with no reason to hold back. He survived a hit from Barry while he had the entire speed force absorbed into him. And even Wally's infinite mass punch, which has the mass of a white dwarf. A white dwarf is essentially the remains of a star's ultra dense core, which has a mass this is over two billion tons. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he took one of those to the noggin and just took a nap. Man, he must really hate Barry if a son to the face can't take him down. But he doesn't have a chance. All of his schemes, all of his machinations, all of his insane timeline shattering threats, all of it was because it was the only way he could think of to spend time with his hero. With the He never intended to be the one person. He wanted to be the kid flash. All Fawn ever really desired was to be by Barry's side. In the end, though, goody little two shoes Barry forgave him and then vibrated away his living paradox powers, erasing him from existence. But in the meantime, Barry didn't kill Fawn. He reset his timeline, removing the one thing driving his hatred his relationship with Barry. Without that, Thawne was a normal, happy Flash fan once again. Oh, it's coming, no. Quiz, he'll be back. And when he does, there'll be no running. He'll always be faster. He'll always catch you. And time is always on his side. Think you can take me? Even death can't catch me. I'm <laughs> 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 
Becoming uh, living uh, paradoxes, uh, uh, making uh, any uh, attempt uh, to kill uh, either uh, of them uh, meaningless. Uh, stupid time travel. Uh, it's difficult uh, to determine uh, who would have to out with the counter to this temporal uh, invincibility uh, first, uh, but it would most likely uh, rely uh, on a combination uh, of speed and smart As far as speed goes, there's a surprise that definitely had the idea of Black Attack. Good reach speeds one trillion of times faster than life. Even if Arabian is considered as a member of the Flash family, Wally West could reach speeds that were impossible to comprehend and calculate. There are numerous examples of this from multiple iterations of the Flash, many of whom Thawne was clearly equal to. 
Plus, he's kind of an expert when it comes to timey-wimey bullshit. And he could likely overpower Black and destroy <laughs> said tyrant too. Way. After all, Thawne once generated enough energy to counter the destruction of the entire universe, which is stated in comics to be at least 100 trillion light years in diameter. That's over 1 billion times larger than our own universe, and over 70 million times larger than Dragon Ball's universe 7. It's sort of impossible to lock down the exact limits of Goku Black's upper strength without getting into lots of assumptions and guesswork. He's obviously stronger than Goku was, but he's more generous with training and power boosts and multipliers. The gap here is way too wide to be able to just assume Goku Black could match this level of power. The DC universe is just too big! And remember, yeah. Barry and Wally's yeah. race yeah. almost yeah. ripped apart the entire DC multiverse. It's yeah. also that yeah. 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 Goku Black is not Goku. Not Goku's drive and willpower can push through even the most absurd <laughs> limits to yeah. the yeah. higher levels of power. <laughs> Some assume yeah. Goku's yeah. Yeah. body because he's more than willing oh, to I take shortcuts. It's an entirely different oh, mindset. Yeah, and once he took care of that time frame, oh, oh, Burns Black had a lot more options than just overpowering Black. With that super speed, he could pretty easily scramble Black's insides or age him to death with a touch. Zamasu may have been a deity even without the time ring, but Goku's body is mortal with a limited range of age. Might have really screwed yourself with that one, huh, Zam Zam? Goku Black was a nightmare show. But Thawne's experience with time travel, ridiculous levels of hacks, and highly impossible speed gave him the means to take the win. This fight was definitely not underwhelming. The win is the reverse. <laughs> I'm going to go to the